It's time to kick off Champions League football in the quest. So we've got an ambitious episode ahead. I've played a lot of football already in your absence since the last episode, and we're going to try and play two legs of a European tie today. So let's dive into it and show you how things have been going. We've played over half of the season already because I had a bit of a suspicion after the transfer window that we were going to be very strong. It's been proven to be correct in that. And I didn't want to just bring you back for meaningless league games where we were winning match after match. So instead, I fast forwarded through to where we're going to begin our European campaign. Remember, we're playing a summer league here in Latvia. So we are halfway through our domestic season. And we're only just kicking off the first qualifying round of the Champions League. We are a massive 17 points clear at the top of the table. Our FS have already lost five games and drawn three. We're unbeaten so far with 20 wins. And the season has been going incredibly well. Our transfer business was pretty strong, I think. We had to go all the way through to May when we took on RFS for the second time this season before we dropped any points at all. There is another game that we've drawn as well, but we have been performing excellently, helped out by the large number of clean sheets that we have been keeping. Not quite so many over the last month, but we went on a spell of about seven or eight games where we didn't concede. We've not been blowing teams away. Lots of our wins have been 1-0, 2-0, we often go in nil-nil at half-time and need to rally the troops and rely on our bench in the second half. But it has all meant that we have a comfortable lead, not unassailable with me at the helm. I have been known to blow some pretty big leagues, but even I am confident that we might make the top four given the start that we've made already. And our positive start to the season is in no small part due to the quality of transfer window that we had. I think by Latvian standards, we have spent a small fortune, not on one or two particular players. Some of them we've bought in for quite low fees, but we've just bought in a large volume of players to deepen our squad so that we can rotate far more than we did last season. The first rule of our transfer window was sign players who were trained in Latvia. The second rule of our transfer window was sign players that were trained in Latvia. And I think we have done that. We've lost some players as well. Some were our choice. We let some of our players go who we didn't think were either up to the task or that we probably wouldn't have registered because they were foreign. And some of our players let their contracts run down and then they left the club. Players like Luis Ibericho, who's now at Lillstrom, he decided that he did not want to negotiate a deal even in the final month of his contract, and he has moved on. But I think we've brought in pretty good quality replacements. So let's start with some of our Latvians, like Alexei Savilyevs. He's been a squad player this season, only three starts. But as a player trained in Latvia, he has been crucial. Another one who's not got a lot of game time, but again, trained in Latvia and is useful to have on the bench is Ilya Korotkov, so he can fill in in midfield or in defence. Another strong backup. We've also brought in some quality foreign players, like Call the Cats or the Alley Cat to his teammates. Good in the air, physically excellent. He's already averaging a 7.2 this season, marshalling our defence incredibly well. As well as looking for more experienced players trained in Latvia, we've gone for some young guns as well. We've tried to bring in the best young Latvian talent that our very limited scouts could find. Players like Andre Tonishevs, who has got three starts, three sub appearances, and mentally looks like he could be an excellent player if we can improve them physically and technically. They could go on and play for Riga for many, many years. We've also bought in. Other young talents, Vladimir Indrans is another player who we've given some game time to. Four starts, four sub appearances at just 20 years old. They look like they could be another useful addition. I think the best Latvian that we bought in is Rihard Ozelins. He has been involved in the national team, 15 caps, mentally excellent. Our new vice captain, good personality, just about there physically. Averaging above a seven comfortably in the league this season. A regular starter for us, which does not half help 
when you've got to play three players trained in the nation every time there is a minute played on the pitch. We've also brought in some other foreign players as well. Again, potentially the best could be Bosnian Alan Mustafic, a really good quality midfielder. He can win the ball and distribute the ball with equal ease. It's averaging 7.4 in the league become a bit of a crucial player for us in the fullback areas we've brought in Sammy Robinson from Kidderminster which I think says something about the quality of the league that we're in that you can bring in non-league players and they are playing pretty well compared to the standard of their opposition and we also decided to bring in a play that seriously weakened our main opponents this is probably their best player RFS Martin Smolensky, a Bulgarian winger, come striker. We've been playing them largely on the right wing. They've got seven assists. They've scored five goals. They're averaging a 7.3. And I think that's a decent bit of business at £245,000. They count as one of our foreign players, but it really robbed RFS of one of their most productive talents. So we were very pleased to bring them in. Other youngsters like Tom Stuglis have joined the club. He's since gone out on loan to get a little bit more game time. And another player that we signed is an English fullback called Talaji Bowler. Tom, to the rest of the team, been a little bit injury prone, I have to be honest, which means we've given more game time to some of our Latvian youngsters deputising. But in just 13 starts, they've got nine assists galloping up from left fullback. And with that pace and that reasonable delivery by Latvian standards, they've been another really important player for us. We've got other stalwarts from last season that are still crucial to our team. We've got Matrovic, the backup national team goalkeeper. We've also got Brooks still plugging away midfield, although perhaps not being as good as I thought they might be when we bought them in from Haverford West. Kierkegaard is. Still in the squad, he's considering his options at the end of the season. I would expect him to leave. I don't think that matters because we've got players like Smolensky who are just as good that have come in and are willing to play for the club. And up front, we've got players like Diane still around 12 goals in 15 starts. And their deputy is also pretty good as well. Michael Oberfemi, the Irish striker, who we've bought in on a free transfer and they've got seven goals in 21 appearances and are rumoured to be worth as much as two million pounds and they are incredibly quick which is great to bring off the bench as well as to start in game so I think you will agree the squad is looking pretty balanced we've got other Latvians from last season still in the squad we've all got other players that were trained in the nation that mean that every time we're playing a league game we can comfortably start with three or four players trained in Latvia in our starting 11 and have four or five on the bench so squad management is a lot easier this year and the finances still look relatively good considering how much money we spent in the transfer market I think we've set this club up for the next few years we've developed the facilities further the training ground is now good and we've asked for it to be improved a second time. We've got their junior coaching up to good, their youth recruitment up to good, and we've had offers accepted by the board to improve both of those as well. And yours truly has even popped onto a Continental B licence coaching course and just being involved in the Champions League has nudged us up to being a two and a half star reputation manager, I'm assuming. Our Champions League involvement has done that. I can't think of another reason why we would have got a reputational boost. So we are going to be playing our first Champions League game in today's episode. We are now probably veterans of the Europa Conference League, but this will be our Champions League bow. And we're going to be playing Slovenian side Maribor yet to kick off their season. So they might be still in the middle of their preseason, just struggling get to get up to match sharpness. That's at least what I'm clinging on to. I think, and I'm basing this purely on watching TNS during our time in Wales, if we are to lose this tie, we still drop into the Europa League. And if we were to lose that, we still drop into the Conference League. So I'm hoping we've got three shots at European football 
and it all starts tonight against Maribor. So after a relatively gentle start to the season where we only had to concern ourselves with domestic games, we're now going to go into a much busier part of the campaign where we're really going to need two squads, the, the domestic squad and the European squad, to battle on two fronts. We've actually got a very big game in between these two Maribor legs as we take on RFS in the Latvian Cup. If we could dispatch them, then in theory... We should have a nice route to the final. It might not prove to be as simple as that. But getting past them is certainly going to be a tough task. And managing the squad between these two games against Maribor and that cup game, it's going to be tricky. So we're going to have to rely on some of our deputies to try and get a cup win. Tonight, we are the home side and we've nipped in early. And I think they've gifted us a goal. After just 11 minutes, it's Diani who's poached his way into a goal-scoring position. They were just playing the ball around at the back. That's a short pass back to their keeper. He was rocked on his heels. He did not come out quick enough. And even though we're not the favourites to secure our place into the next round, we've gone a goal up. There is Oshelins. He can't win the ball in midfield. Jug gives it to Rapass. And now we've got some defending to do. I did not think this would be an easy tie against Maribor. That early goal has not made me think that we're going to steamroller our way into the next round of European competition, and especially when we go out to Slovenia. That is going to be an incredibly tough game. They are playing the ball through the midfield third, and now they've got it down the right with their fullback. We're struggling to get back. It's gone into the box, and they have equalised, and I thought this would be a good side, and so it has proven this is going to be better than any team I think we are going to face in the Latvian top division. And our right full back, which is Robinson, the boy from Kidderminster, really was struggling in the air against his opponent there. I suppose that makes sense, doesn't it? You come from non-league football in England to play in the Champions League. It's going to be a tough baptism for you. Here is Robinson again. He feeds Smolenski and that man Diane. Is he onside? He's dinked the ball over the keeper. It was a lovely finish. But unfortunately, it's not going to be one that counts. He has leaned into an offside position. And that little chip over the goalkeeper will count for nothing. But it does show that we can still be a threat on the counter-attack. Ica Maribor again, though. 41 minutes on the clock. There's the goal scorer. Smolenski helps his fullback out on that occasion. And we've moved the ball through the midfield ourselves. Here is the Bosnian Mustafic, Kurt Gard, last season's right winger. Now the inside forward out on the left. We've brought the ball through to Smolenski. He's got players in the box if he can hit them. Instead, he finds Robinson. The ball cannons around in the area. There was a chance there, I'm sure. But we could not find the finish. A corner goes into the near post, but that doesn't elicit a chance. But Katz dinks one in. It's that man again. He is on fire in this game. That's his third goal. Only two of them have counted, but he has looked lethal tonight. Just before the halftime interval, we have found the lead again. And it's the centre-half, Alley Cat, who just sends a lovely little dinked ball to the far post. Diani, who has been very hit and miss in the league this season. And he's certainly been hit tonight. And we find ourselves 2-1 up at the break. That little assist for the Alley Cat has got him to a 7.4. Diani is on an 8.5 and playing superbly. I think about 65 minutes is our normal time to make some changes. Can we find another chance before then? Smolenski gives the ball away. Robinson is running like Hasselhoff in the opening scene of Baywatch trying to catch his man. And they're in again. And Andrea Campagno has scored. And for the second time, I think that is Robinson's goal that he has been at fault for. He can't get anywhere near his man. He's playing like a boy lost, I'm afraid, at right full back tonight. Maybe that is where we could make some changes because we do have a deputy right back that we could play for the rest of this game. And in fact, on 62 minutes, I think we're going to make some changes. 
So three subs made and a little bit of rotation. Fyodorovs has come in at right full back. Mustafic is going to drop down to be the DM so that Scribzy can come onto the pitch. And we're bringing on Baba Musa in central defence for Pedro Enrique, who's not had his best evening of football. Player, I'm not sure I remember to show you. It was a Brazilian that we signed on a free transfer. He's been okay this season, but not outstanding. We are 2-2 on the night. We've got a free kick with 15 minutes left. Smolensky tests their goalkeeper, makes them work and wins us a corner. Brook goes over to take this set piece. It's gone into Musa, who just flicks his header wide of the goal. And if we're going to find a winner, which the match stats suggest maybe we deserve, we're going to have to get it late on. Matrovic picks the ball out of the air. We're going to try and build it from the back. He should throw it to one of his centre halves. Instead, he goes for Tom Bowler over at left full back. He plays it up the line to Kirk Guard, who has not had a great game. Maybe that's one of our other subs that we're about to make. We've got the ball free in midfield. Mustafic feeds Brook. We've gone over to Diani. And that could have been his hat trick again. Their goalkeeper takes their turn to stand tall. And sees it behind for a corner that Tom Bowler is going to curl into the near post. Didn't really challenge for that one, which was a bit disappointing. Tom Bowler's going to have another go. We've got the ball to Smolensky. It's gone into the box. Brooks there. We had players that he could find. Instead, we've recycled possession. And now, 83 minutes on the clock. It's certainly time to get Kurt Guard off. And maybe another change as well. As we move towards the final stages of this game, I guess 2-2 is not a disastrous result. It gives us something to fight for out in Slovenia. But having taken the lead twice and then getting pegged back on two occasions, a little bit disappointing. We've now got to go and play that cup game against RFS before the second leg. So alas, if there's going to be trophies this season, it's not going to be in the Latvian Cup. We have crashed out despite having the better XG. We've lost 3-0. Our backup 11 could not get the job done on the night. It's a little bit concerning because straight after this Maribor game, we're taking on RFS again in the league. In fact, just a couple of weeks later, we're playing them again in the league. And if we lose both of those, you never know. We could get jittery at the top of the table. So hopefully we can stem the tide. I would expect more European fixtures for both sides in between those two games as well. So be a time where we're putting a bit more strain on the squad with more games but tonight it's all about going out to Slovenia and taking on Maribor it would be a dream if we could go another round in the Champions League imagine if we were to take a Latvian side into the group stages of one of the European competitions it would be well, quite an achievement I think for tonight we're going to make a couple of changes we're going to bring in Chernomordis into the center of defense he's a little bit slow but offers us good leadership. And we're also going to make a little change in midfield. We're going to bring Dumbledore in. We're going to play them as the central midfielder on attack. Their passing is back up to 15 now. Their vision is 12. I'm hopeful that they might be able to just spray the ball around for our front three to wreak havoc. We're going to try Kierkegaard on the right side and Smolensky as the inside forward tonight. And Diani. If he can perform anywhere near as well in the second leg as he did in the first, you never know, there could be a chance. So unfortunately for this game, Obafemi is injured, so he's not available for us on the bench. And the one area where we are a little light is having backup strikers beyond Diani and Obafemi. And this tie has taken a turn for the worst. After just seven minutes, it's a set play to the back post. And Carrick has squeezed it in from quite a tricky angle. And we now find ourselves behind. They're bringing the ball through the midfield. We've managed to win it back, though. There's Tom Bowler, Oselins, Diani. The ball's given away, but we've won it and he's in. And he was deadly in the first leg. He's continued it into the second leg. And we are back all square across the tie. I can have to look at who won that sliding tackle about 30 yards out because that was crucial. It was Dumbledore, the player that we have bought in for this tie to be a bit more creative. It's actually their battling warrior-like spirit 
that creates the assist for that goal rather than their craft and guile. He just wanted the ball more than the central defender. And we've crashed our way back into the game. Kirkgaard is playing poorly again. And since he's decided that he wants to leave the club and is considering his options, he's not been the same player as he was last season. And they've had another little effort on goal. I thought Matrovic tipped that wide of the post, but if it was a corner, it didn't mean it led to a highlight. And we're going in at the break. 1-1 on the night, 3-3 on aggregate. We're about to enter the final 10 minutes of this tie. At the moment, it's poised for extra time. But Maribor might have other ideas as they spring our defensive line. And they are in and they have spurned a very good opportunity. And from that goal kick, we're straight into yet another highlight. We've launched it long. Yane, to his credit, makes the most of that lump forward and wins the ball. Brook and Musa, both of whom have just come on in the midfield, link up. And now we've got the ball to the Bosnian Mustafic. Here's the alley cat, Tom Bowler. Tonisic Diani is in. He could win it. He's onside. He's found the back of the net. That's his fourth goal in the two games we've played against Maribor. In fact, he scored all four of our goals against Maribor. And now we've just got to try and make sure that we hold on to this lead. It was another of the subs, the youngster, Tonishevs, that set him up. And I think with just nine minutes left, we need to make sure that we don't do anything foolish in the end of this game. So I don't want to change too much. Hopefully I've just taken a little bit of the sting out of the play and we're going to play a little bit more cautiously as we go into stoppage time. The other change I'm going to make is just to take Tom Bowler down to being a fullback rather than a wing back. And we should be, hopefully, just set up to counter on them without giving too much away. And it's that second goal by Diani on the night that's got us a 4-3 aggregate win. An unlikely win, if you will. And now we can show you who our opponents are going to be in the second qualifying round of the Champions League. So as it turns out, we may have been better off losing that game to Maribor and dropping into the Europa League because we've been handed a tie against Ludogorets, who alarmingly have been the champions of Bulgaria for the last 16 seasons straight. So they are certainly not going to be any pushovers. I think we might play the first leg off camera and then come back for that home leg. And hopefully we'll have done enough away in Bulgaria to still be in European contention when we come back.